All right, let's begin our discussion of wave properties by uh, going back and reviewing what interference was. So we already did this in a previous lesson, but we want to talk more about what causes interference. And there are two kinds of interference that we're going to be very much interested in, constructive and destructive interference. And so this is going to happen uh, when you add two waves together. So first, go to this website and open that. Do it. Okay, are you doing it? Okay, just don't. You're going to get a lot more out of this if you get to play with this stuff as well. So here is the website, and you see that it has two uh, waves that we can add together. So I want you to play with these things up here and see what do they do. Okay, so the first one is uh, any, any of these controls are going to control the blue wave and then these controls over here are going to control the green one. So if we take this blue one and I grab it and I move that slider, what's it doing? So it's going to be changing the amplitude of that wave. And then if I, I can do the same thing for the green one. So go ahead and play with that one too. And you'll see that it changes the amplitude of the green one. Now what we want to do though is we want both waves to have the same amplitude in order to get total constructive and destructive interference, which is what we're interested in. Okay, what does this one do? Okay, so what do these do? So if I move it, you see it has the effect of moving it from side to side. And then if I do this one, it moves it from side to side. So this is going to be called the phase angle. So what do I mean by the phase angle? Okay, let me take the blue one or let's say the green one. So here's the green one and notice it's starting at its maximum right there. Okay, and then it repeats itself over here. So right here is where the green one repeats itself. So we could put a number to that by remembering that when you go around in a circle, you go around in 360 degrees. So if we want to think about this here, like this, and then here's our midpoint, and then that green one is starting up here, we could call this zero degrees. And then over here, so where it's going to go down, and then it's going to go back up again, and so here's where it's repeating itself, we could call this 360 degrees. Okay, so that's what we mean by the phase angle. The phase angle is going to be where this thing is beginning at. And the phase angle is going to go from 0 to 360 degrees. Another way of thinking about this is if you go around in a complete circle, that's also going to be called 2 pi. So we could also say that this thing goes from 0 to 2 pi over to here when it repeats itself. And so does the blue one. The difference is where is the blue one beginning at and then where is the green one beginning at. Okay, and then now this one down here, uh, I'm not going to mess with it because it's, it's going to be kind of difficult to put it back to where it was, but you can. So go ahead and manipulate those sliders, this one and this one, and what you're going to notice is it's stretching the wave out, or it's taking the wave and compressing it. So you could think of it as changing the wavelength of the wave, or you can think of it as changing the frequency of the wave. So both of the definitions are okay. So the, the bottom slider changes the wavelength of the wave, or you can think of it as changing the frequency of the wave. Now, we want to put the two waves together, 
All right, so I'm going to turn on the red one here. And that red one is the sum of the green one plus the blue one. I want you to manipulate this second slider here. So manipulate this slider so that you get the maximum possible red wave. Okay, how are you going to do that? So we want two identical waves being added together. They have to have the same amplitude and they have to have the same wavelength. So don't do anything with this one and don't do anything with this one, but you can manipulate this slider and see what happens. So I'm going to slide it, keep sliding it until I get the maximum red one. And you see that that's going to occur right here. Notice that they're both starting at zero degrees. So what's their change in their phase? Zero. So constructive interference is going to occur when you have a phase difference of zero. So we say that they're in phase when you have constructive interference. Okay, now uh, take the slider and move it so that you get destructive interference and see what you're going to get. So again, we're going to move the slider, but this time we're going to move it. It's getting smaller, 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 oh, too much. So we're going to go backwards and until, and it's kind of hard to get it exactly, but let's just say, eh, all right, right there. Okay, that's close enough for me. So you can get it to where it's exactly a, a straight red line, meaning it has no amplitude. All right, so that's going to be destructive interference. So if this is zero degrees here, and then the green one repeats itself over here at 360, where do you suppose this blue one starts at? So right there, 0, 360, 180. So we say that this blue one, the phase difference between the green one and the blue one is 180 degrees. So we say that they are 180 degrees out of phase. And then that's what's going to produce the destructive interference. Or what's half of 2 pi? Well, it's pi. So you could also say that if it's pi out of phase, then it's going to be destructive interference. So this is going to be a big deal. We're going to, in, in several examples, we're going to have two waves that are going to come together either constructively or destructively. Okay? All right, so I think we, uh, actually you might want to keep this one out and you never know when you're going to need to use it again, so just minimize that and we can go back to here. Okay, and now we're going to take a break and we're going to find out under what conditions do two waves interfere constructively and destructively.